Thank you, President Peterson, Provost Brace, administration, faculty, parents, friends, and of course, graduates. I am indeed honored to be part of this great day. As a newspaper editor, I join you today as someone who tells and oversees the telling of stories for a living. Not bad work, really, if you can get it. In my work, I have the privilege of sharing with people the most important stories of our time from a national and local perspective. And hopefully with urgency, insight, and depth in an age when all of us have almost instant access to those stories as they happen. In fact, I expect and I'm looking forward to some of the graduates here today inventing technologies that improve and make easier our storytelling. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution is engaged with Georgia Tech researchers even today in hopes of inventing better tools to tell stories. We're in an age where people, more people, crave more information than ever before. The stories we all hear and tell have never been more important, but more about that later. I'm also optimistic that some of you will go forth and create new business models for this particular storytelling business I'm in, newspapering that is. We could sure use a few new business models. But I hope you'll indulge me for a bit as I talk about storytelling and connect it to this most important day. Nothing is more important to a culture, a family, a company, and even a university than the stories people tell about it. Though they may be a tweet or a comment on Facebook or a video on our phone, we are defined by the stories we tell, whether they are funny, sad, inspiring, or emotional. And in an age of massive amounts of stories and information, the things we tell our stories about a difficult class, a hilarious fraternity brother, or an epic road trip, a vital story in anyone's repertoire, those stories have never been a stronger signal of what's important to us, what shapes us, and what we value. This very day will become a story many of you tell, and that story will ingrain your memory of the day, and it will remind you of how you felt about it. And your story will contribute to the culture of Georgia Tech and how graduates feel about this important place. And based on my experience, your graduation stories won't include what the speaker had to say. I'm fine with that. And so today, I urge you to tend to your own vital story. That story that will become the tale of your life. There is no more important story, no story that you are more obliged to author with care. As an editor, I'm compelled to offer a little guidance in writing that story. First, let me acknowledge that your story appears to be off to a good start. As you know, precious few students make it into Georgia Tech, and even fewer make it out. You've certainly authored a couple of impressive early chapters in your story, including the ones that led to this Georgia Tech chapter. Congratulations. And the characters in your story have no doubt been a good group as well. Certainly, there seem to be a lot of characters here today, as I have been warned. And I hope you'll take a look around. The characters you've spent these years at Tech with shaped your story and contributed vital parts to it. And as any writer knows, good characters, those with personalities that you love and with emotions with which you connect, well, they're hard to find. Nice work finding so many characters. In fact, perfect ones for your story so far. Of course, the next chapter of your story, story likely requires you to leave these characters behind, to recognize that their part in your story, however vital and fulfilling, is mostly over. That's not easy. It's always the hardest point in any great story when a character we love is written out. I know I'm still not over the part where Bambi's mom dies in the famous Disney movie. I bet you aren't either. But don't worry. Other characters will arrive in your story, whether you're ready for them or not. As your story develops, the characters get harder to understand, and they often don't fit as neatly into the narrative you've planned. But welcome them still. Characters are the heart of a great story, and of course, you ought to commit to your story being a great one. All worthwhile stories have good guys and bad guys, and so these characters may come along as bosses or rivals or competitors or partners or they may be comrades or combatants, and some will become friends, 
and perhaps a lifelong partner, which of course is the most treasured character in any personal story. Each character, as we know, shapes the story somehow and changes the course of its plot. So tend carefully to the qualities of the characters you invite into your stories. At times, you'll have little choice but to put your story in their hands. It's your story, after all, and you don't want them running it off somewhere it doesn't belong. Because there are stories that get you on the evening news or in the newspaper with an unflattering picture. Just ask Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> I have much experience with such stories as a newspaper editor and their characters. No one ever starts out with that in mind. I recommend that you leave such stories to someone else. But that gets us to the vital point. Never forget that the most important character in your story is you. That doesn't mean you'll always be at the center of every scene, but we all have a favorite character in familiar stories that inspire us. And we know the things we love and admire about that character, the things that draw us to them. I urge you to be that kind of character. And it is your story, so you get to decide. So as you write your story, some more advice. Don't worry about whether you're creative enough. You don't have to invent character traits. I can let you in on some that have held up through all the ages and in all the forms of storytelling. Here's one, commitment. We all love a character with commitment, that character with unflagging loyalty to their goal or ambition. Whether they have a desert to cross, an ocean to sail, a mountain to climb, or a prison to escape, we all like our characters devoted to their cause and unswerving in their actions. So be that way. Know what you want and what you care about. Make it something huge and important and far off in the distance. Craft a life story that points toward that goal each and every day. Never lose sight of it. And remember that great characters in great stories, whether Ulysses or James Bond, use tools and technology but despite all you may have learned about those things at Georgia Tech, that's not what really guides them. Instead, our, her our heroes are guided by their integrity. For in all great stories, it's not just what our hero does, it is how he or she does it. We demand that they do it with grace and style, of course, but mostly we want them to do it with integrity. They do the right thing, even when they think no one is watching, because someone always is. Our heroes listen to that little voice in their head. It tells them what the right thing to do is. The best and enduring characters always act with integrity. From the Bible to Huckleberry Finn, from soap operas to reality shows, integrity remains the most crucial yet scarcest of qualities. So when in doubt, when your plot lines thicken and get confusing, when your characters in your story seem to have drifted from their moorings, when the outcome of your story suddenly seems threatened, make sure you're the character whose actions are guided by integrity. That choice, as proven in virtually every story through the ages, never comes out badly. And one final point. Most good books, now we've heard of books, right? Those increasingly unfamiliar packages containing stories, right? Most books have a section labeled acknowledgments. Most of us are trained to skip that part in our rush to read. And I'm not even sure that ebooks or iBooks even include those sections. I make it a habit to read the acknowledgments section. It's the place where the author thanks all of the people who helped with the research, the editing, and all the things it takes to fashion a really good story. Today, I urge you to begin authoring that acknowledgment section of your story. Take a moment to thank all of the people who've helped you to the stage today. No character journeys through their story alone. Most all heroes have someone who helps them up when they stumble. The best notice and appreciate it. Today's a good day to start being that kind of character. Thank you for your attention. Congratulations and good luck. Good luck with your story. I'll be looking forward to hearing them, reading them, seeing them or experiencing them on whatever technologies come along. Thank you.